So welcome everyone. In this episode, we're going to talk about our experiences with psychedelics, namely DMT, mushrooms. We're going to talk about our birthdays coming up in March. Um, we're talking about divine <laughs> protection and guidance. Uh, we talked about air fryers, <laughs> our synchronicities <laughs> with roses, um, how we define and utilize self-care, um, and how we clear resistance and actually enjoy the process. So enjoy this episode. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our fourth episode already. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. these are, I, I really love that we're, we've been doing these consistently week after week. And it's just it's such a beautiful, I think it's going to be so beautiful, like, for us to be able to look back in time, too. It's like, this is such an era right now. Like, I know it's going to yeah. continue on. It was just like, bro, this is so iconic. It totally is. I feel that even I'm looking from before this had started and I feel there was a time and I was thinking I wish I could do a podcast with somebody and talk about all my ideas and I just remember looking forward to this moment and it's just so beautiful that it's now here <laughs> I'm really really appreciating these <laughs> dude that's so dope I get to be part of your manifestation <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow and I couldn't have, in my wildest dreams, like, imagine, like, the details of it. But I knew it was, like, it's going to be, like, talking about cool ideas, having a good time, and just, like, it'll be easy and, like, yeah. If I had to pick a word to describe this whole journey so far, easy. And easy. I think, like, that was the biggest sign, too. As soon as the idea was brought up between us, it was just, bro, how, how have we not done this yet? Like, <laughs> it was definitely, it was ready to be born. That's that's the thing is because... I feel every time I run a, an idea by you, like, yeah, it's great. And I, I'm always like, wow, like, that was so easy. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't have to think like, oh, is she going to like it or not? And every time you're like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's let's go with it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm always down, dude. But I think that's a testament to like how lined up our energy is. Cause, exactly. Like, dude, I felt, I, I, don't, I don't think I've appreciated that until you just said it. It's like, dude, like literally every idea you've had, I'm like, fuck yeah but like yes <laughs> oh my gosh that is exactly like we're very in in line with our ideas and it shows and it like yeah. you can feel it so yeah. and i think i think anyone who's been watching so far is feeling that too so for sure thank you guys for also being in alignment with us and yes. joining us on this journey <laughs> that's what i love thinking about too it's like anyone who's listening to this it's like bro out of the billions or millions of podcasts out there or like any content you could be watching like you're watching this right now like that's very yeah. deliberate thank you <laughs> thank you guys. thank you for calling it forth from us because we can feel your desires <gasps> yeah. as well yeah so. wow. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i know we're gonna get into so many topics per usual in this oh, episode yes. Uh, but we're super excited today, at least to start off with, uh, we wanted to talk about our different experiences with psychedelics. Um, so it's like shrooms. I've had experience with DMT and acid. So we could just dive right into that. Yeah, let's go. Well, last time you had mentioned that you tried DMT. So I've never tried that before. Mm -hmm. And I like, I'm totally curious, like how that was for you and like how it affected your life and like your spiritual exp mm -hmm. experiences and like everything. So I'm really grateful for that experience. And I'm extra grateful because the guy who I got to try out DMT with, he's been doing it for a while and had the perfect setup for me. So it was a powder that he actually made himself like from the plant. Mm -hmm. um, I remember it was like this yellowish powder and he had a vaporizer. So I think usually people like you could smoke it, you can make your own like actual like vapes with it. Um, but he just put it like it was like this water vapor. Um, I think it's like for like it's used for bud too. So he put like it's used he, for what? Sorry. Like for weed. It's like oh, those okay. vaporizers. <laughs> you know, it's just like it heats it up and then it's like you could just like smoke the vape. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thing. Um, so that's like what a we dab. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. 
And so, dude, he measured out precisely like the amount of grams. And I was sitting in his apartment. We're sitting on the floor. Um, and so he had all of these plants around him. So it's like, I felt completely comfortable. And I trusted him like clearly. And uh, he was like, are you, I just remember his face right before he's like, ready to blast off. I was like, yes, <laughs> like, I'm ready. I was a little bit nervous. Um, just because again, it's like, I had no idea what to expect. And he kind of gave me a heads up. It was just like, you know, it's only going to last a short while. Just stay grounded. Like just know it's like whatever you're going to experience, like you're meant to experience. So I take it. And he kept telling me to inhale and inhale. Like, and he kind of guided me through that process. Um, Because if you don't take a certain amount, you don't co- you don't go through what's called the breakthrough. Because um, mm. if you take DMT, just like a few hits, it basically feels like weed without with mental clarity. So it's like you kind of feel it's like whoa, like everything is HD, but it's like you're not you don't feel high. Mm. Um, so he told me to keep inhaling and inhaling, and he told me when to stop. And I was just sitting there. I I had to close my eyes, and I could feel it starting to to work, and then. I just remember like with my eyes closed, almost felt like I was in a roller coaster. And it's like, I could just feel myself like going back, like in circles. And then the moment came, the only way I could describe it is like, dude, like I went through this tunnel, like Mm. almost like imagine just like a tunnel shooting from earth to like another dimension. Like I was just traveling through this tunnel and I land in this space where the first thing I'm, I'm gonna, I, I termed, this first scene, my rainbow family, because all I saw was, have you ever seen, like, I'm sure you've seen like psychedelic art where it's like all rainbows. Like it could be a landscape, you know, with trees, the ground and the sky, but like everything's like rainbow colored and Mm. everything's connected. That's exactly what I saw. And it almost, it was kind of like a Mario video game, like just that vividness and brightness of it. And it, it had that warm family feeling for some reason. Mm. which is really interesting now that I think about it. Um, And I just felt so at peace there. And that was the first sign that I realized everything is connected. There was no separation between the tree, the ground, me. When I looked down, I was a rainbow body too. And then... Wait, were there like any other like beings that you could see there? Everything was I could feel everything. Okay, so like the tree, was, for example, was like a tree, but a being. Both, okay, okay. Whole family, like, ev- dude, I could f- the ground, the water, the sky. It was all its own entity that I could feel. Okay, like it wasn't something in the background. It was like they were just in my face. It was just so wild. And then, I think that was pretty much my peak. And then I. Keep in mind, I've had my eyes closed the whole time thus far. So after that, like the next scene I remember was just psychedelic art. Um, Mm -hmm. And just like all these cool fractals and patterns showing up. And it was just like all constant movement. I was just, and I was a part of everything too. And I think at that point, like I could feel like I was slowly starting to come down because it wasn't as intense as like the whole Rainbow Family experience. And then I finally had the courage to open my eyes. Dude, this is when everything shifted for me. (laughs) As soon as I opened my eyes, I literally saw this 3D physical reality being reconstructed right in front of my face. I saw from the floor, the walls started to materialize and become solid again. And I'm just like, like, what the hell did I just see right now? And then I looked at my... Did it, was it kind of like a video game? Like when you go in the room and it doesn't load yet and it kind of, okay. <laughs> 100% dude. And I was just like, so it's just like, and then I closed my eyes a little bit again. And I was just like, what the hell's going on? Like, what the hell did I just witness? And then I opened it again and everything was solid. And I think I was just like talking to my friend. He was just like, are you doing okay? I was like, dude, like, this is so wild. And then pretty much at the end of it, um, I remember just looking over at my friend and thanking him profusely for being so patient with me because in my mind dude that whole experience felt like a good hour no joke I was just on a whole journey so I'm just like think like and like I'm just thinking he's just been sitting there quietly for like an hour just making sure I was okay and he was like it's only been like 10 minutes oh my god (laughs) and afterwards like the come down I was just like I don't think it, it hit me until the next morning 
I woke up to it and I just, it wasn't a sadness. It was more of like a shock and like mm. more like, what the fuck? Everything is kind of fake. Like in terms of like, bro, like this whole thing is a simulation. This whole thing, like we've constructed right now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, on like in that ass took me a good three days to get over that. That's not wow. just like, wow. Because I remember like smoking outside of my bathroom and seeing, I, I think I mentioned it in the last podcast, like looking at the tree and just like looking at the sky. And I'm just like, is this really here right now? And it's just, it just like completely like reconstructed my whole sense of like what this physical reality is. Wow. And I think the biggest takeaway, like I think once I got over that shock, I kind of just like really appreciate it. I was just like, dude, like everything is connected. There is absolutely no separation energetically between wow. any us and anything around us. And if I'll send you some wow. pictures, dude, I told psychedelic art. Um, there's a, I noticed a lot of architecture, dude, that is straight DMT inspired. And I think like for anyone okay. who, like, that has ha- tried DMT, it's like the kind of like the visions you see, it's like, dude, I see some mosques specifically like Islamic architecture. Mm-hmm. Dude, they just, it, it's the same pattern that I saw wow. in my mind. I was just like, whoa, blown away. Oh my goodness. So I absolutely would recommend it. Um, and I would say, I think it would be helpful. Like, dude, if you've never, if someone has never tried psychedelics, that's a wild ass leap to go straight into DMT. So I would definitely recommend, like, if you feel comfortable, like on acid or shrooms, like, Mm -hmm. I think you would feel ready for DMT. And especially like if you've cultivated that inner peace and have like practiced raising your vibration. Mm Because again, like anything you take, it's just going to be, it's just going to amplify your own vibration. Right. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. I've, I've never even done acid before. I've done mushrooms okay. many times. Every trip has been completely different from the next. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so I think, okay, cool. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, but yeah. it's on my, it's on my, my try list. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I figured I was ready was because it appeared in my reality. Like when my okay. friends came, I wanted to try, I was like, okay, Clearly, this is a sign. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. How yeah. so? When the time happens, yeah, you'll be ready. Yeah. What was your first extreme experience like? Um, my first one wasn't really all that like life changing. It was mm-hmm. fun. I didn't get too too high. Okay. Um, but the second time that I tried it, um, I did it with my sister and uh, a friend of mine and her boyfriend. <laughs> and it was a lot stronger than the ones that we had had my first time. <laughs> so, and we were all kind of like not really aware of like how much we were taking just based on how strong it was. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't say like it was a bad trip. It was definitely like a more difficult trip, but like what I got out of it from the end would, what I would not say is bad at all. Mm hmm. Um, it was, it was scary. And I felt like a lot, like, like questioning reality and like my part in it. And like, even my thoughts, I'm like, are these even my thoughts? Like Mm. just kind of like really feeling like not myself as Ari, you know, and just kind of like watching me be Ari and kind of being like, what is all this? You know? Um, so (laughs) we first went out and we went like to a park. And we were like only a couple blocks away from my house, but like I could not find the park for the life of me. And I asked one of the like people in the neighborhood, like where the park was. And he's like, it's right there. And it's like literally across the street from us. It was very funny. Um, And I was like so embarrassed. I'm like, I hope this guy like forgets that I asked him where the park was when we clearly see it. (laughs) But he lives in my neighborhood, so I might see him again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and then we kind of got lost on the way home but we got back to my house which is like literally like two and a half blocks away wow so we made it back but then so like my friend and her boyfriend went home it was just me and my sister and like for some reason like the like idea that everyone's gonna die and maybe even mm-hmm. soon was like just like ever present 
with me. And like, I felt like I just wanted to be together with everyone. Like my, Mm -hmm. all of the people that like in my life that like my mom and like my friends and like, I just like felt like I missed them so much, even though like, I knew I could just like call them, but like, I really felt like I missed them, Mm -hmm. you know? And like that feeling has like, I don't miss them, but like that feeling of like really appreciating them has like never gone away since then. And because of that trip, like that kind of like, it made me closer with my animals and made me closer with my family. And like, it really just like, just stripped away a a layer away of like something blocking me from like truly loving them. So that was like, that's why I said like, it was a difficult trip. Like at first it was fun and it was funny, but then it started getting heavier and harder. And like, I didn't even know who I really was. And like, it was kind of like, and also like, this was like through the height of like the lockdown and COVID. And so like Mm -hmm. even society had completely changed and it was kind of like, what is going on? And like, it was like terrifying and like, yeah. but after I'd gone through this process, I felt like so much, so much love. And, like, all the fear was, like, gone. And, like, even, like, days after that, like, there was one, like, really strange thing that happened, like, like just soon after that. I was making a smoothie, and I might have told you the story before, but I I was making a smoothie, and for some reason, I decided to, like, like, my my old blender, kind of, like, every, like, few minutes, you had to, like, mix it, otherwise it wouldn't blend up the fruits. So I decided to use a knife for some reason to, like, jam the fruits back down but I didn't turn off the blender so (laughs) I stuck the knife in and the blade came out and it like passed right by my face and almost hit my dog and I just I couldn't help but laugh and I just knew in that moment that like when it's my time it'll be my time but it clearly wasn't my time so (laughs) and like all of my fear just like just was gone and I just like I feel like sometimes like nervous, but I don't feel fear. Like, I feel- and when I do, like I'm like I can step through it because like it's not my time. And if it is, oh well, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, dude. Sheesh. Dude, I low key love moments like that where it's like you're seconds away from a complete and total disaster. I think oh. it's a testament to like how protected we really are. Exactly. <laughs> You know, in the moment, like at that time, I didn't think about it as being like protected. I just thought like, okay, it's not my time. But like now looking back, I'm like, oh, I was, I was definitely protected. And now like knowing that I have my guides and knowing that I'm protected by source and my inner being, like, I just, I feel like if I'm not meant to go there, I'm not going to be allowed to go there. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. So like I'll do anything that like I feel like yes. I'm meant to do, you know. Me so. too. <laughs> Did I it's really that, guided I, by source. <laughs> literally. Yeah. I had that experience too because I got the download on a trip. Sh- it was probably like an acid trip that I was gonna live a long life. And ever since then, like I so re- I felt that in every cell of my body. I was like, oh mm. shit! Like I'm gonna be here for a minute, dude. And I was already fearless that took it to a whole nother level. Like I would do anything and everything uh, like obviously that like I wanted to do just knowing that's like, dude, like I'm going to be around for a while, but I had an experience in (laughs) the first time I went to Costa Rica. um, I went to a waterfall and I've never had a fear of like cliff diving or anything like that, like jumping into water. Like that was my favorite Mm -hmm. bit in the world. Um, And this waterfall, it was must've been like a good 20 feet. So, like, as soon as we got there, like, I took off my clothes into my bathing suit, and I ran. I got a running start. I slipped on the water, dude. On the way down, I was like, oh, fuck, there's rocks here. Oh. The only, only a little bit of my ankle hit the rocks at the bottom of the water. Dude, oh I God. was inches from a bed of rocks. Because I technically, I should have ran and then jumped a little bit farther. So I was like, I basically just like went oh straight down. God. Bro, when I, I got out of the water, everyone was concerned. They're like, oh, what the fuck was that? Like, are you okay? Like, I, I could, like that whole energy changed. And I'm just like sitting there. <laughs> my body was completely paralyzed by fear. And all I kept thinking, I was like, <laughs> dude, if this isn't proof that I am so divinely protected, I don't know what is. 
plank. Yeah. Wow. And then I had to get to get over my fear. I had to jump again just to prove to myself. I was like, dude, there's <laughs> nothing to be afraid of. And I was shaking with fear. And oh, my gosh. Dude. <laughs> that Even is so a, cool. A little kid was encouraging me because he could, like, everyone could tell. Like, uh, it was so sweet. Like, this little boy, he kept jumping. He would rant, run, jump, run again. And he's like, see, <laughs> it's no problem. And then at the bottom, I'm just standing there getting ready, psyching myself up. And it's like people at the bottom inside the water, they're like, come on, jump, you could do it. I was like, dude, this is so freaking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh but my yeah, God. I, think, wow. I think when you know you're protected, that just gives you it does. a sense of free. Yeah, like, you know, you're dead. Mm-hmm. And I, I also feel now like I'm so more, so much more connected to like my purpose and my mission that I feel like fearless. I feel fearless about speaking up about like what I need. I feel fearless about like saying no to things that I don't want to do. I feel like even honestly, when it comes to smoking or drinking, I can easily be like, no, thank you. Cause I know it's going to like mess with my dream cycle and like my sleep cycle. So like I just, and my body, you know, like, and I just like, I'm, it's so easy for me to be like, no, no, yes. Like, and like, I just feel completely guided and just like, and trust that so much more than like ever before. Yeah. So yeah, I do the same here. It's almost hard to me. I made a promise to myself a while ago. Um, like when I really committed to this journey that I was always going to follow every guidance and impulse. And Mm. after that, dude, it's so like, I, I can't ignore it anymore. Like if something is a clear no, no matter how illogical it is, there's nothing else for me to do. Oh my gosh. I even today, <laughs> uh, on the topic of birthdays, because it's going to be our birthdays next month. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, my mom has been bedridden for a while right now. So I'm just focusing on taking care of her. And that's kind of, kind of derailed my travel plans right now. So I figured mm. um, I did want to do a birthday trip at least like that weekend. But now I've decided to push it till the end of March instead. And for a while, like my plan was, I just want to go into the woods, rent out the cabin, completely have my phone off for like three days and just like anger and quietness and solitude. That's all I want. Um, and anyone could join me if they want to, but that's my intention for that trip. Ooh. And I go on Airbnb this morning to look for cabins it was a clear no for my guidance oh wow and I was like okay maybe I'm meant to go somewhere else so (laughs) I don't know that part yet but I do know I'm not meant to be upstate New York during that time so right okay that's funny I did I actually I had a similar experience I was looking for jobs and like I found this one it was in um like Burlington or I don't know another city outside of of where I'm at and um so I applied for the job and then immediately I started looking for like houses for rent and I was like but there was like nothing like nothing I could even remotely picture myself living I just like laughed I'm like this is clearly not happening (laughs) for all I know there'd probably be a house I would fall in love with on the internet but it wasn't shown to me (laughs) okay I was like I'm being so silly like not silly like it, it was it was an idea but I just I'm like this is not it. <laughs> and it was like very obvious. Yeah. Like if I have to try that hard, it's not it. <laughs> yes. Exactly, dude. Wow. You know what? Actually, I wanted to say earlier, when you were talking about your experience, like almost falling and you were like, just this close. It, I just had so many of these like memories just like flood back to me mm-hmm. suddenly. Like I now realize how many times I've been protected and it's like insane like there was a moment like years ago like when I was pregnant with my son I was like behind a building and these guys like decided they wanted to like physically assault me there's a bunch of them and like they tried to beat me up and like they they did they beat me up but when I then they ran away because I had, like, for some reason, like, I just got this, like, impulse to, like, walk into the alleyway, which was, like, more in the light and toward the street. And I don't, I literally just, like, I don't even know what the impulse was. My body just turned and I started walking. And I was, I didn't even know why I was walking away. And that's when they attacked me there instead of behind the building where no one would have seen. So after that had happened, they ran away. And I got up and 
the first thing I did was like check. I just gotten my nails done that day. Um, the first thing I did was check to make sure my nails were dusted. Sorry. And well, then like, yeah. And I looked down and like, like what they had done to me could have killed me. But I looked down and my body, I had all there. The only damage there was, was a scrape on my knee. That was it. I didn't have any bruises. I didn't have any like anything. And like my son obviously was born and he was fine and he's perfectly and healthy. Pregnant. Yeah. And I was I like, and, and that was actually probably like my first memory of like knowing that there was something else out there. Cause I'm like, they could have killed me. Literally, there was like seven or eight of them. And like against like little old me as a 16 year old girl. But like all I had was a scratch on my knee. I was like, and and the way I, like my body just left, like I didn't even think, oh, I should leave. My body just turned and walked. I was like, that was so like strange, and like I was so grateful, you know, like yeah. that, like that, that happened because I just felt like it could have gone any other way, you know. Yeah. So like I don't know, I just I just remember that now, sixteen years later. <laughs> But I think that was, yeah, that was a huge turning point in terms of, like, me believing that there's, like, a higher power. Because before I'm like, whatever. God, yeah, sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm so happy that <laughs> the situation turned out how it oh, did. Oh, yeah. Wow. For real. <laughs> and I just remembered another one, too. <laughs> um, I was I was, I was doing, like, a, su some summer courses. Um with a friend of mine and we would always like every day after school we'd always go to this place near our, our university called college park we'd hang out like every day every single day without fail we'd go there we'd get like coffee and like snacks and like hang out in the park for a couple hours and we'd both go home but for some reason her parents called us one day after school and it was usually like just a few people there it wasn't really busy or whatever it was just like <laughs> us and like a couple people passing through like nobody really like it wasn't like a big busy area. So for some reason, her parents, they had gone to, um, a th to see a show in the theater and they insisted that they pick us up after school. And the theater is like really close to the school and they insisted. So <laughs> that one day we, we decided like we went with her parents, we had dinner with her parents and then they dropped me off at home and she went her way. And the next day we saw in the news that seven people had been stabbed and killed in college park that same evening <laughs> it wasn't meant for us <laughs> clearly yeah dude whoa god yeah. damn <laughs> dude whenever and i think that's a testament too it's like whenever certain plans change or let's say like i'm stuck in traffic or someone's late like if anything changes from what i'm expecting i know mm. there's a much bigger purpose mm -hmm. and we never know the chain of events of like something that we could have just potentially completely avoided yeah and and then at the same time there's always like a little gift at the at the end of that too and those kind of things happen to me almost every day <laughs> like yeah. just filling up my water jug or like going to the gym and like just being late like every single time like there's yeah. always like something interesting and like new happens from that <laughs> yes <laughs> I had... now i'm like okay what <laughs> what now <laughs> yeah. oh my, dude i've been having so many of those moments lately and the, i mean like they're kind of small but it's just like whoa like it's just so cool how the timing is so perfect and i get like just following guidance um when i was walking i was walking back from the gym and i kind of just like follow my impulse of like because there's multiple ways i could get home like it's all gonna lead me to the same point mm -hmm. and then uh i just had the impulse to go down this one specific street and it's like normally i don't, I don't really prefer that route because like it's prettier view the other way but that like it's so rare for me to get an impulse to go down the street. And I did. So I was just like, okay, clearly there's something there. Dude, there was a whole gang of cats just chilling. Ooh. On the street. <laughs> I was like, this is so beautiful. Yes. Like I was meant to sit right now and play with some kitties. This is Oh crazy. my God. <laughs> you know, oh my God. I had this, like this download, like it, it was such a cool download and it was, it was about following your guidance. And I just got this like image of like, I don't know if you remember those like games where like there's like door A, door B, door C. Yeah. And like behind each door, there's something different. But like, and like, okay, like I picture like when you follow your guidance, like the the door that you're supposed to open is lighter. It, it's, it lights up. 
So like, if you don't follow your guidance, you open the door, there's going to be a lion behind it that will eat you. So don't be surprised. Or it'll just be empty and not really that great. And you'll just yeah. have to go into another bunch of doors and choose again. Yeah. <laughs> or you can open the door and that'll lead you to everything you want. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like guidance is always like, <laughs> this door, <laughs> this one. Dude, this conversation is helping me connect the dots of something I've been contemplating for a while now. Um, Because I read the Surrender Experiment um, by mm-hmm. Michael Singer. And that whole thing about him, like, when he truly committed, like, he decided to completely surrender to the universe. And it's, like, com- even, like, to to the point of, like, ignoring his own preferences. And it's kind of reminding me, too, it's, like, when you feel that open and have that much trust in mm-hmm. yourself and, like, in the world, like, when you have those impulses, like, to go here or to do this, it's, like, you are surrendering yourself. Mm. into that impulse like no matter it's like because like even like example just like walking a different path you know it's like I could have deliberately decided to go down this path just because I personally have a preference but I decided to surrender it's like okay let's go for it and I think we did that like that was so cool to do like even on our trip together like to Italy and stuff like that yeah (laughs) all the the Europe adventures we were just like fuck it like dude let's just see where the day takes us let's surrender yeah Oh my gosh. I honestly, like, even when I walk my dog in the neighborhood, like every time I'm like, I'm going to like, I'll always have like a, a plan. Like I'm going to go walk down that way. Then I'm going to go that way. And then go that way. And it'll be about 25 minutes. Perfect. Then as soon as I get out, I get to the corner. Something's like, go this way. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I never take the same route. <laughs> yes. So it's like, it's like, just like more and more just like, even in the little things, like which way to turn walking down the street. It's like, you can follow your guidance then. It doesn't always have to be like these big life, like changing yeah. moments. It's just yeah. coffee or tea this morning. Yes. Know. And it's so much easier for me to follow it because especially like things that like I actually do have a preference for. If I ever get the impulse that goes against that for any reason, I'm just like, whoa, like, clearly this is for a reason. Yeah. Like, why else would it, why else would it be even come into my mind? You know. Yeah. You know that's the thing. It's like what you like, what your like your personality that you created has a preference for, but then there's like who you really are in your inner being, what your inner being has a preference for, yeah. and it's like when you trust that inner being's preference, it's like it it becomes your preference now, at least for that time being, right? Yeah. And, for that moment and it's like moment by moment you get to be who you are not who you like set yourself up to be yeah you know Dude, that's the only way i grocery shop now too it's like i'll literally like let's say if like i'm getting a specific product like the the actual one i end up choosing out of like what the 10 of them like mm-hmm. i literally have to feel it out it's like oh okay it's not this one it's this one even though it's the same thing they're all the same thing like right <laughs> like <laughs> but for some reason the energy is like favorable for this one. Oh my god <laughs> You know, that happened to me. Like, I, I was trying to buy an air fryer and I went to Walmart and they had like 30 different air fryers and they were like different sizes and different prices and different things that they did. And like, I got so confused and so frustrated. I just, I just left. I was like, I guess today is not the day to buy an air fryer. This is not my path of least. Oh. <laughs> Still don't have an air fryer. Bro, whenever you do, we're going to probably have a whole episodes about air fryers because I love things so much dude it's changed the game like especially okay. prep dude you're gonna love it so wow. much I think my friend said his air fryer makes like yogurt or something yogurt yeah. <laughs> I gotta go like, this. what, the, what the, dude what can't this thing do oh like that is something else no way <laughs> You can make yogurt. What? That is something else. I don't know. I, I did not expect that. Okay. But apparently, nice. this is what's going on with the air fryers. <laughs> Soon you're just going to type in, like, what food you want. It's just going to, like, print it out from the air fryer. <laughs> Dude, that would be so sick. I've always, <laughs> I've always had that vision, too. Like, when I was a kid, like, making up inventions. Because, uh, like, uh, I would watch the Food Network a lot. Um, mm-hmm. i like, dude, how sick would it be, like, if you're watching something on TV? It's like the smell vision like you'd be able to smell it and then like 
kind of That's like a 3D awesome. printer of food, just like create it in front of you, like whatever you wanted or like whatever you were watching. You'd be like, okay, I want some of that right now. Oh my God. I was, I was actually just talking about that with my sister yesterday, like something similar. Like I was, my neck was hurting. She was like in the kitchen and like, I was talking to her like behind, like from mm-hmm. the living room turning and like my neck started hurting. So I was like, I'm like, just audio call me for now. <laughs> Audio call me. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna look forward. You talk to me. <laughs> I'll just listen. So I was petting my cat, and I decided to close my eyes too at the same time. I'm like, okay, this is more like an audio touch call. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I'm like, imagine you could like call your cat and pet them like from a long distance. <laughs> Aww, I would so do that anyway. Right? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, that's funny. It's funny that we were just talking about it. <laughs> yeah. But synchronicities, they're all they're all over the place. All the time. What is synchronicity? Dude, I don't know what's been going on, but it's, I noticed it since last... M- oh, wait, no, we're still in February. <laughs> Roses have been... That's been my sy- biggest synchronicity to the point okay. where at the beginning of the month, um, Hay House had a a big sale and discount so i was looking for oracle cards to buy and this one and i went through you know it's like when you're on a site and it's like you're kind of just like window shopping on your phone and then mm-hmm. it's like you don't save anything but you come back and like i was like if something catches your attention it's like okay like let me just get this like clearly i want it this specific one it was the rose quartz oracle deck it didn't look interesting at all my guidance kept saying you need to get this there was okay. other interesting Oracle decks that I got, but I got that one because it was a few times. So it's like my intuition just kept pointing me at that. It's my favorite deck. Out of all of them, that's the one oh, I wow. like the most. <laughs> so that's the Rose Oracle deck. I got, um, I got, I've been into Gua Sha lately. And then I didn't know it came with rose hip oil. And of course, during oh, that, that's one, why your cheeks look so rosy, <laughs> baby. Yeah, dude, by the way, I freaking love the gua sha, not the roller. Oh my, dude, it's just so relaxing. Oh to my god, do it and like you could massage your neck with it, like ten out of ten. That's funny, and it's funny that like when I saw you when we first got got on here, that I had to say like you look rosy. Rosy, I did not. <laughs> and even using like the rose, the rose hip oil. <laughs> And had roses around in your life. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> and then, um, this awesome girl that I met on Twitter a few years ago, uh, we just decided to randomly just start texting each other and just instead of just sticking to social media, her name is Rose. Oh, and nice. Thing, and that's when I realized this was only a few days ago. I'm texting her. I noticed her name, and literally right in front of me is the Rose Quartz Oracle deck, the Rose Hip Oil. And then I had a rose deodorant <laughs> and I had to take a picture and said, I was like, what is up with this theme of roses right now? I actually, oh my actually, God. I got to look up the spiritual meaning of that. I have to show you what's on my pants. Stop it. Roses. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Surprise. I put it on for you. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh that, my God. That is all roses right there. Okay. You know what I said before I got on here? Actually, when I put on this outfit, I was like... Jasmine and I are so synchronized. I'm like, I wonder how we're going to synchronize today. Like, and I chose, I just kind of like felt around. I'm like, this is what I want to wear. And like, wouldn't it be that we get onto this synchronizing with roses stuff? Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, we have been matching at least like twice <laughs> the past few episodes. So I was I was expecting that too. Oh my God. <laughs> And it's so funny how it came in like a way we didn't expect. It's not the same shirt this time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, our inner beings are so funny. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so you guys are gonna like this. Out of everything I could have had synchronicities with and all the pants <laughs> you could have chose to wear. Come on, let me see this virtual meeting of roses. I don't I never think that's a coincidence either. <gasps> in the realm of spirituality, the rose holds the power to rejuvenate our weary souls, offer soulless hope, and comfort in times of distress. Its essence can remind us to take moments of self-care, cultivate stillness within, and nurture our own well-being. I like that. Ooh, what's your self-care routine? Um, well, 
I care about myself all the time. I love that. <laughs> yes. It shouldn't be. So nice. my self-care, um, not routine, but like my self-care, like stance, I guess I could say. I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to call it stance. Like I'm, I just like, I really like, I want to self, um, actualize, you know? And so like moment by moment, like I really take the time to like ask myself like what do you want and that's like that that same feeling of guidance right Mm -hmm. and so like I don't know if you mean like like maybe like my like skincare or hair care routine or like but like for me it's like there's certain things that like I I'll do every day um and if I don't do I forgive myself because you know what like moment by moment things change but like for example like I write in my planner every single evening because like I just like to be have it like an intention for the next day Mm. and so and I want to get I have like big dreams you know and I want to make them real and I know if I'm just like not taking the steps to do (laughs) you know like I'll get distracted so like that helps me keep focused Mm. um and I also like there's also room for guidance to tell me like like if I say like seven o'clock I'm supposed to be here but my guidance is saying like no or it's saying 7 (laughs) 15 then like I listen to that too so I'm not like completely stuck by that but like yeah um yeah I would say my self-care routine is like genuinely listening to myself I love that (laughs) what's yours that's a really good one um I would say kind of similar and I think like for me it's like it's very easy for me to be super social and Mm -hmm. And I guess I just like have this, I wouldn't call it a need, but it, it, I just love being around people, um, whether that's like family or friends, but I have noticed it's like, as soon as my energy starts to be drained, I give myself permission to completely leave without any explanation. Mm-hmm. And I know if I'm not having a good time, it's like my energy and my presence has absolutely no value there, um, which I think is a form like my biggest form of self-love because in the past I would comp- I would feel almost like in that codependent sense it's like oh my god like it's gonna be so rude if I leave like I have to mm-hmm. be here people need me it's like you know all those like excuses I could just do me like yeah it's okay. like I could just go back to my apartment and literally do nothing like because <laughs> that's what I want to do and that's okay I feel so good about it <laughs> yeah yeah oh my gosh yeah I found myself doing that recently too like I was hanging out with a friend and like I was enjoying myself but like just all of a sudden I just felt I don't want to be here anymore and then like and we were thinking like oh should we extend this like longer or whatever and I was like you know what I'm actually gonna go home yeah and it like it was like the perfect time and like I just like I felt like oh like I really like that I did that because in the past, I'd be like, yeah, I'll stay over in, like, maybe even two days, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, no. For some reason, like, I would just feel like, like, there was no, like, it wasn't like they were being annoying or, like, anything. It was just, like, suddenly I was like, it's time to go. Yeah. You know, and that was that. was that. Like, you know, so I thought, like, wow, I really did that. You know, like, I listened to that little, like, my little voice isn't little anymore. Let's I love put it that, that way. <laughs> yeah. That's the perfect way to describe it. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, and that's the ultimate self-love. Like, really, like, and I I love how you phrase it. It's like really, like, truly listening to yourself. Mm, Yeah. I like that. I feel like that's the first time I've ever really said it like that. Mm. I like it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to share that more, you know, like self-care is really listening to yourself. For real. I remember like years ago, I had a friend and, um, I mean, she's still my friend, but she said to me, she's like, buying a latte every morning is my form of self-care. But like, not not even an hour before that, she said, I'm spending way too much money on coffee. She's like, every day I spend money on coffee. It's like such a waste. And then she would buy, buy a coffee and be like, every, she's like, buying a coffee is my form of self-care. And I thought, okay, like, but you're not listening to yourself. Yeah. Dude, I always advocate too. It's like, especially after um, being able to kind of let go of like... Um, feeling guilty about certain addictions or like vices I've had. Mm-hmm. Um, like as soon as I remove that guilt, it's like, and I sense that in other people, like I'll always say, it's like, dude, whatever you're going to do, do it. And don't feel guilty about it. Mm. 
Like, yeah. If you want to freaking smoke crack, smoke it. Don't feel guilty about and it. And enjoy it. Enjoy, and enjoy it. it. Yes. You're doing it because on some level you're enjoying it. So I feel yeah. guilty. Same with spending money. Dude, money's always going to come back. Come on. If you're going to do it, enjoy it. Yeah. At least. Don't beat yourself up about it. And if it's something you don't want to do, then like, then you can think about that after yeah. you're done enjoying it. Yeah. You know, exactly. think about like, why am I doing this? What, yeah. what need is it filling of mine? Yeah. You know, and like really look at it and examine it without rejecting it. Because as soon as you reject it, you're not going to get what you need out of that experience. Yeah. You're just going to have to relive that experience again and again and again until you learn it. (laughs) And it's almost like the guilt of enjoying it kind of overshadows that introspection later on. Because like now you have done it, you're just feeling guilty. But it's like, if you enjoy it, then like you have that openness and like, not so pressurized feeling of being like, okay, like I did that. Why did I do that? When it's like, maybe some level I didn't really want to do that. And why? Yeah, exactly. Or you try to enjoy it and you're like, I'm really not enjoying this. Huh. That was so wild to experience too. And I follow my impulse for that too. It's like, I think my only vice right now that I would say um, is vaping. Um, mm-hmm. Enjoy nicotine so much. Um, but dude, until I get the impulse, like I, I true personally, I don't believe that it's unhealthy for me on any level. Um, and I'm just going to keep doing it with everything in my life that I'm doing right now. I'm just going to keep doing it until my guidance tells me otherwise. Yeah. And the only reason I stopped smoking was because I kept getting guidance. It's like, you need to stop. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's how I quit smoking too. Cause I would try to smoke and I would be so guilty. And it was like, it wasn't, that wasn't working. So I said, okay, like if I'm going to smoke, I'm going to enjoy the crap out of it. And then like, I would try to enjoy it. And I'm like, I'm actually not enjoying this. Mm. And like, I would always like look forward to that cigarette thinking and enjoy it so much. Then when I actually did it, I'm like, mm. not to say that I haven't had like, like a select few times where I like really enjoyed my cigarette, you know, like I really have, but like, it's like, not like 10 times a day, not three times yeah. a day. Not even like once a week. Yeah. It's like I can actually almost count on one hand how many times I like really enjoyed it. Yeah. You know? So they're like those things. It's like, oh, I could do that like probably like 10 times in a lifetime. Yeah. You know, instead of like in a day or a week, yeah. you know? So I also, I never stop myself either from that stuff is that you do, especially mm-hmm. on vacation, dude. Or it's like in a new country, especially, I don't know, like Europe, like. There's cigarettes everywhere. With a good latte or a good coffee mm-hmm. or a good espresso. I just like, like, <laughs> like bro, the aesthetics alone, like, yes, I'm all for it. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's like, but that's like part of also the experience, right? So like, I definitely, I wouldn't say that like going, I mean, it is an experience in yeah. all sense of the word, but it's not really one. Like, let's say it's like winter time. And it's like nine o'clock at night and you decide to like make a tea mm-hmm. and go outside and like have to put on layers and like sit outside like when it's like dead of winter and it's freezing out and you don't want to go outside, but you mm-hmm. just do because you want to smell. I mean, it is an experience, but it's not one that like you want. <laughs> so like, what is it about that? Yeah. That like you can ask yourself like, and I've asked myself like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Why am I really doing this? So. Dude, I've had so many of those moments. In the rain, in the snow, uh, being in abandoned train tracks, like, with homeless <laughs> people. Wow. Dude, it's, yeah. Like, why do I like, this? walking around, like, wanting one, and you don't have one, like, Pat being like, who do I ask? Like, that's not, like, it's an experience, and it's not, like, it's not, like, something mm-hmm. shameful, but it's, like, it's not what I want to be doing. Yeah. So like, why am I finding myself here? Why do I feel like that's what I, yeah. what I'm choosing to do now? You know, what do I get out of that? Yeah. Oh. I have to say, like, I've met some of the coolest people through smoking though. Like, hey. people. <laughs> like I don't, I, the social aspect I enjoy so much. Yeah. I was like being outside of like a venue or something like that. And it's like, you know, the circle of people just like chilling outside. But well, that's a huge, that's a huge reason of like, what do I get out of it? It's like a social aspect, for example, I get to socialize with these people or like, if you go up and like get a lighter or a cigarette from someone, you wouldn't have talked to them otherwise. Yeah. Now there's an excuse. So it's yes. like what you're really craving is to socialize with people and have an excuse to socialize with people. Yeah. So it's not even the cigarette. So like 
you can even like replace that like addiction with like what you really desire behind it you yeah. know so Dude, I had the most wholesome ass moment <laughs> like a couple of weeks ago um i was with two friends who were visiting new york and uh they just wanted to do drugs uh so we went into a bathroom and uh this guy offered one of my friends something and like i'm not gonna let her go into a bathroom by herself but like a stranger you know so i just went with them um so we're just like in this bathroom i just like i'm just watching them do their thing and just like dude, i just enjoyed the whole like i loved being there i loved being a part of it like <laughs> like i'm just there like all happy it's like there's just doing drugs like by the, by the toilet and shit like that it's like i just enjoy people and i love people i was like and even like with smoking and stuff like that even if um like i just realized i don't have to actually partake in the act if i don't want to mm, I can yeah like just still stay with everyone and just be there and still get yeah. the best of those interactions exactly and like not even judge them too while they're doing it and just kind of like you know like even if like you know like they might not even really want to be in that situation Mm. either you know it's like yeah or maybe they really really do and it's like just allowing them to be like who they are where they are you know and like still enjoying them yeah (laughs) and then i think it's like i would be the absolute last person to judge anyone because it's like i've been in that position too you know and it's like, hey, like, dude, it's, this is one of the hardest schools on yeah. this dimension in universe. Oh, gosh. But, like, whatever you got to do to just, like, keep going and keep chugging through, it's like, bro, just do it. Yeah. And if you need help studying or figuring out the challenge or whatever, I'm here. <laughs> oh, hell I'm yeah. Not, I'm not going to judge. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I actually have been thinking about the idea of judgment a lot lately. Mm-hmm. And like, I find myself like asking, like, if I'm judging someone else instead of like being like, like, if I feel like someone's judging me, for example, then mm-hmm. like, I'm asking myself, like, am I, am I judging myself? Where, where am I being judgmental? If judgment is showing up in my, in my atmosphere, where am I being judgmental? Yeah. How am I being judgmental? And like, even today at the gym, I, like, I, I went in with the intention, like, to just try to be kind to people. Like, I felt myself, like, when I was walking up, I, I kind of felt like my, like, my pants were kind of, like, over my stomach in a way that my stomach was hanging over. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. trying to fix it. And I was like, why am I doing that? I'm like, mm-hmm. am I worried that people are going to judge me for having, like, a little bit of a jelly belly? Wow. Like, like, why am I doing that? I'm like, how about instead of me worrying about judging them, me ask myself if I'm being kind to that person. Wow, dude. And I, so many people came to talk to me today. And, like, I just, like, I just recognized so many people. And they're all, like, happy and smiling. And it was, like, that, like, shift in, like, the feeling of, like, the interaction. Just, like, it, it changed the entire atmosphere of the gym. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, that's such a great example of like, yeah, like you're assuming they're gonna judge you. Where is it? Right, that's that's just like completely yeah. no story. Like you have no idea what they're thinking. Yeah. And that's almost like me prejudging them as someone who would judge me for having a belly. Yeah. Because I'm not that person at all. None of them are, you know. You know, I I know I had that huge realization um with my mom. Cause for me, I always thought like she is so freaking judgmental. And then it took me so long to realize, bro, I'm literally judging her for being just <laughs> Come on. And I think that's why it was my vibration. <laughs> and too, like, I've also realized too, it's like, the only reason it bothered me is because I must do it on some level. Otherwise, it wouldn't even phase me and I wouldn't even care about it. So I guess it's like, like, for example, it's like, because I've been bullied as a kid and teenager, like, if I happen to see another kid or teenager being bullied in front of me, like I would probably feel some type of way, but it's only because it's like mm. I have a resonance with it, you know. But it's like, right? Let's say if I never got bullied, like I'm not in that vibration. I don't have that resonance with that situation, so so it probably wouldn't phase me. Like I might feel sad for the kid, but it's like it wouldn't fundamentally bother me, you know? Right. Yeah, I think like any judgment that you receive has you. It ha It's only self judgment. Like, if somebody, like, makes fun of you for, like, your weight or your teeth or whatever, and, like, if you don't believe that that's a bad thing, then them making fun of you, like, doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You know? But if you also kind of believe that, then it, like, 
it amplifies that feeling that you have for yourself. So like, it's really like, it's, 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 it's really a beautiful thing when somebody's being judgmental of you because they're reminding you of where you're being judgmental of yourself. Everything is a mirror. <laughs> which is so much accountability to take in sometimes it's like oh fuck i i'm creating this right now <laughs> oh man it's like uh, i feel so like high on life lately like i just i feel like literally like just that experience yeah. in the gym today and it's like just like being like really there to like question my thoughts and like really just like i'm like really just enjoying the juice of life and like really Oh, and it's so powerful how it immediately reflects back. Like, dude, a hundred percent. Like, I think that's why it's so important to have that self awareness, dude. It's like you have to be so mindful of the thoughts you're thinking. It's shaping every single experience that you're having. Yeah. Certainly, I feel like an artist now, like, like of my life. Like, I'm the designer of my life, and I'm kind of like. Uh, this color doesn't really go like what would be a better color like how can I enjoy this one Ooh. Ooh, that brightens the whole room <laughs> yeah that's why I love being put into situations where I get to like practice this especially like areas where I know I have resistance and mm. I think like in this specific time period of my life it's like bro there's been like it's like constant back-to-back situations where it's like resistance has to be cleared like I can't bypass this anymore so I was like I'm just uh. so with experience and the <laughs> oh my gosh it's like once you start doing it it's like and it feels so good and it just like solves so many like so many problems like oh my god like it just feels so good to feel good that like why would you not <laughs> yeah did i think my favorite aspect of it is like as soon as you clear resistance on topic like let's say it's like your energy or like your belief was kind of like down here and it's like ideally you want to be down here it's like even if you make a tiny bit of progress, a tiny bit, like when you come back to that topic, like you're never going to go back to this lower level. Like your, oh, your vibration is always going to be where you last left it. And it's just like, that's yeah. just so, I don't know why that's just like, makes my day like to think about it. It's like, dude, like every, all of this clearing does work. Like it, it is having an impact. Oh my gosh. Like, because it's like chip out way at it little by little. It's like, you don't have to get over it completely, you know, in like one go. Yeah. It just gets easier. No, exactly. And then that's like, you don't have to get over it right away. It's yeah. like, just like, even knowing that it's there. Sometimes like, I feel like I'll have resistance and I'll be like, I don't know. I, I don't even know what the root of it is or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm like, I see you <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we're going to deal with it, but like in the right time. And so like, yeah. I'm totally forgiving of myself for feeling resistance or being upset or yeah. like, you know, like being uncomfortable it's like I'm uncomfortable I'm comfortable being uncomfortable now I'm just like okay yeah. no problem we'll get to it you yeah. know and when I'm when the right time comes I'll be like okay so what's that about yeah you know? I think one good example of me of a topic I'm talking <clears throat> on but it's like I I don't sense I'm at the root of it just yet so I'm just gonna let it go um but if like if it's bothering me in a moment I'll just like let go of it in that moment um for me right now, it's when I think I'm starting to get overwhelmed with how much responsibility is in my life right now. So it's like between work and family and like wanting to make time for friends, wanting to make time for myself. Um, when I get into that space where it's like, oh, fuck, like, can everyone just leave me alone? I tend to isolate and it's like mm-hmm. my communication game sucks so hard. Like I, <laughs> I stop communicating to my friends like... I don't want to hang out. Like I want to have a zero amount of responsibilities as possible for a while. And I'm realizing that's just stemming from a place of me assuming that there's not enough time. I'm sensing a a lack in time, Mm. which I know is not true. So that's just something I've been kind of like navigating Mm. and with lately. And just like, yeah, like why do I feel overwhelmed in the first place? And why do I tend to pull back? in those cases yeah. and then I feel guilty for not like being yeah. good to her and stuff like that and it's like and I'm just letting go of that guilt too yeah I I feel like overwhelming sometimes it, it's it gives a sense of like like that feeling is almost like a sense of like so what would happen if I didn't actually do all these things who would I disappoint and what would that really mean yeah. you know does that mean like I'm a bad person does that like what does it mean and like that's obviously not true. So like, okay, maybe a couple of these things don't get done. 
maybe or maybe they do you know who knows but it's like what does it really mean at the end of the day you know yeah <laughs> and i've been noticing that too it's like before like what why do i even care about yeah. these possibilities that are getting me overwhelmed it's so weird <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know what it means you know it doesn't mean yeah. anything <laughs> I've, I've had like, I had this actually something that I recently worked through, um, is someone that I've been, that I had been seeing for a couple of years. Um, he lives in my neighborhood and I tend to see him like often Mm -hmm. for some reason, every time I see him, I get so nervous. My heart starts racing. Like I basically like I'm having like an adrenaline rush, like, like, panic attack like it's not a panic attack but like my heart's racing I'm sweating like I, and like sometimes like I'll go somewhere where like I've seen him before and he might not even be there just like the grocery store and just going there I'll just get like anxious and I'm like what's that about and I really sat mm-hmm. down with myself and I like because after a while like just recently like I actually saw him and I was so nervous and I got home I'm like okay so what is this about because I'm obviously uncomfortable And there's no amount of thoughts that I could tell myself that could, like, make it, like, change it. Like, this is just, like, you know? So I thought, okay, so what's really going on here? And I realized, like, at one point in our relationship, I felt rejected by him. And he rejected the idea of us being together in a relationship. I took that to mean that I'm not worthy of the relationship. And so in my... In somewhere in my belief systems, I allowed someone outside of me and not just him, but like other, other people in my life to be the person or the people who decide what my worth is. And so like my worth was outside of myself. And then in this like, kind of like deep dive of myself, I thought, okay, well, my worth is set in stone. That's unchanging. I'm, I'm worthy. God created me. I'm obviously worthy. So that's not true. So, and then I thought back and like, I had this memory flash back into my mind of being rejected from my parents. And I thought, okay, that's where that came from. And I went back and I like, imagined myself as a little girl. I loved her. I told her your worth is (laughs) non-negotiable. And I, I, I hugged her and I told her like, you're going to see this. You're going to see this. And these, these people that you call your parents, they're also children who don't feel worthy. And that's why they're doing that. And ever since then, I have felt so much more relief (sighs) throughout my life. And I, I, I hugged her and I told her like, you're going to see this. You're going to see this. And these, these people that you call your parents, they're also children who don't feel worthy. And that's why they're doing that. And ever since then, I have felt so much more relief Ah. throughout my life. Yeah. So I, I talked to, I talked to my younger self and then I like, it was, it was amazing. I had like a big cry and I felt, I felt so much better. And actually like throughout like this whole past week or so, like I felt like none of that anxiety. Um, And like, I really, I really had a chance to like clear like resistance that was like super like stored there from like a long time ago. And like, I never would have thought to go back to that day, like having that be like the starting point. But like when I really sat down and I asked myself and I really said, what is it? What is it? And like, I just like focused and allowed like my mind to just allow me to see the image. So that was a huge, huge moment for me. And I'm like, just excited to keep doing that and like clear more resistance. (laughs) Dude, I had a similar experience in Costa Rica, like tapping into like the root of like why I felt rejection. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was so powerful. And like, you could feel that heaviness like lift off, right? Like, it's just like, (laughs) dude, that's so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I hope, honestly, it felt amazing to me. And, like, I hope, like, maybe somebody, like, may be going through something similar. And, like, no, I don't hope someone's going through something similar. But, like, I hope that, like, someone else can, like, help, like, clear their own resistance, you know? Yeah. That. Because it's, like, gosh, it's so delicious. <laughs> yes. 
No one makes me feel happy that that even happened. Just to say, like, right? Wow, I did that. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's like I love those opportunities that present itself because it's like you. If you're too in the weeds into that situation, you're just assuming it's like you and this other person. But it's like, dude, it's like, no, that person's just reflecting back to you what you're feeling internally. And it's like, it has nothing to do with them, honestly. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's all us. That's it. That's all it ever is. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it ever is. <laughs> yeah. yeah.